Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons and Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe to make sure there's rum next time you play. Maybe, only if you're 21 plus. Today we're building the Pauper of the Surf, the Jester of Tortuga, Captain Jack Sparrow himself. Jack is the definition of a swashbuckler. As long as you don't look up the definition of swashbuckler, it's nothing dirty. It just refers to wearing a small shield or a buckler while boarding ships, but eventually the buckler part was forgotten. Anyway. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to have some drunkard's luck, being so lucky that it seems almost impossible. Next, we'll make sure we've got some skills with a sword, not worrying so much about fighting clean. Finally, we'll make sure that we can move around the ship without losing our footing. For stats, we're using the standard pointer right from the player's handbook. Roll if you want, just make sure your dexterity is above 13. Dexterity is actually going to be our top stat, so if that's not 13, you're not lucky enough to play Jack, check out another build, I'm sorry. Charisma after that, despite the black teeth and rum breath, Jack is endearing enough to drag a franchise two movies too far. Wisdom next, the term blind drunk doesn't apply to Jack as he has the keen eyes of a sailor. Constitution will follow, holding the rum is important if you want to live forever. Intelligence is a bit low, but he does have fairly decent knowledge of pirate lore and will dump strength, we just don't need it. Jack is a human, variant humans get to get lucky, which is just the name of a feat. Probably. This gives you three luck points, which lets you roll an extra d20 on an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. You could use it on an enemy's attack against you to give them disadvantage. Bump your dexterity and charisma with your two free points, take history for your skill of choice, and the pirate background for athletics and perception. Kicking things off as a rogue, first level rogues can grab four skills from their list, go for acrobatics, stealth, sleight of hand, and persuasion, which I'm taking over deception as Jack is more likely to bend the truth to his favor than outright lie. You know thieves can't, which is something I generally skip over here but it's a set of codes phrases and general tomfoolery that other rogues would know which is useful if you need to parlay you get expertise in two skills of your choice side so takes sleight of hand and perception finally there's sneak attack letting you deal an extra d6 damage when you have advantage on an attack or an ally within five feet of the enemy jack isn't the type to worry about fighting fair so don't worry about landing a cheap shot second level rogues get cunning action letting you dash disengage or hide as a bonus action so if the fight's not going your way run away there's no shame in that no shame you're gonna feel anyway. Third level rogues can pick a roguish archetype and was there any doubt it would be a swashbuckler. You get fancy footwork meaning that when you attack a creature they can't hit you with an opportunity attack until next turn. Doesn't matter if you hit or miss either, you can slip away like the slimy little eel you are. You also get rakish audacity letting you add your charisma modifier to your initiative and you can add your sneak attack damage if there isn't another creature within 5 feet of your target. So basically as long as you're not getting ganged up on, sneak attack is a go. That also increases to 2d6 damage instead of 1 so you can really hit the weak spot. Bouncing over to fighter now, first level fighters can choose a fighting style. Mariner gives you plus one to your AC and lets you swim and climb without using extra movement as long as you're not wearing heavy armor. Now, shirts soaked with Caribbean sweat and booze may be heavier, but they're not heavy armor. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest, so you might not live forever, but you'll live a little bit longer. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make an extra action once every short rest. Keep in mind, sneak attack damage is only once per turn, but an extra attack, dashing or disengaging while you dash or disengage engage with a cunning action would be a useful thing. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and will double our luck with the champion archetype. This gives you improved critical, letting you land a critical hit when you roll a 19 or a 20. Pairing this with sneak attack is very good as you not only double the initial hit, but any sneak attack dice you're rolling as well. Fourth level fighters can pick a feat. The crossbow expert feat lets you fire a crossbow at melee range without disadvantage. You don't have to use a bonus action to reload and you can make another attack with a hand crossbow as a bonus action after attacking with another weapon. We flavor hand guns to be hand crossbows here they perform basically the same function and jack is a great shot fifth level fighters get an extra attack letting you attack twice instead of once as an action i'd save the sneak attack for the second hit just in case you crit unless you crit on the first hit and then obviously put it on that one back over to rogue now fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement and we'll take it bump that dexterity up for better swashbuckling with the understanding that this isn't literal swashbuckling because you don't have a buckler fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge letting you use a reaction to have damage from an attack you can see 
so tumble and swerve out of any major damage. Your sneak attack also increases to 3d6. Six level rogues get expertise with two more skills. Acrobatics and persuasion will be my picks. Your mobile and shrewd, these skills are great for mobility and shrewidity. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. So those cannons might blow holes in your ship, but that shrapnel won't be blowing holes in you. Your sneak attack damage also increases to 4d6. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Cap the dexterity for all the grace of a cap, a heavily intoxicated cap, but a cat nonetheless. Ninth level swashbucklers have panache, meaning that you can make friends quickly or piss off your enemies. This lets you make a persuasion check against another creature's insight if you win their charm by you for a minute, provided they're not hostile. If they are hostile, you become their only target. They have disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures that aren't you and can't make opportunity attacks against anyone but you for a minute. Pairing this with fancy footwork, which prevents them from making opportunity attacks against you, and cunning action, which doubles your movement speed effectively, you can piss someone off and have them chase you all around the battlefield while never actually landing a hit. Your sneak attack also increases to 5d6. 10th level rogues get an ability score improvement. Round up your charisma and wisdom. Both are a little low and odd numbers are bad. If both are even, just go for charisma, panache, and initiative are good things. 11th level rogues get reliable talent, meaning that you can't roll lower than 10 on skills with which you have proficiency. Considering rogues have the longest skill list in the game, this is pretty great. Your sneak attack also increases to 66. 12th level rogues get our last ability score improvement. Bump the charisma i don't want anyone beating your panache it's too damn fun 13 level swashbucklers get elegant maneuver letting you use a bonus action to give yourself advantage on an athletics or acrobatics check with your action you really need this for athletics and probably for acrobatics if you want to pull off some of the wacky shenanigans jack does your sneak attack also increases to 76 here which is 14 d6 with a crit that's huge 14 level rogues get blind sense making you aware of any creature within 10 feet of you as long as you can hear even if they're invisible for flavor call this blind Find luck and hit things with a literal stab in the dark. Our capstone is the 15th level of rogue, giving us slippery mind for proficiency with wisdom saves. You can't charm a pirate and you can't hold one unless they want to be held. Your sneak attack also increases to 8d6. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have a sextupled chance to crit with crossbow expert, extra attack, and your improved critical from champion. A critical sneak attack doubles all the damage die, so it's 2d8 plus 16d6 plus 5 damage with a rapier critical, or 18d6 plus 5 with a hand crossbow. You're also great at getting around and can use that to your advantage with panache, either making your enemy chase you around or have disadvantage on your allies. Finally, lucky is such a good feat, a lot of DMs straight up banish it from their tables. I I've even been that DM and I allow pretty much everything. For reference of how good it is, luck die are basically just slightly worse portents that divination wizards get and they need 14 levels to get three, which you just get at level one. For weaknesses, you're kind of squishy. With only around 125 HP, you're also lacking damage that isn't physical, so high-level enemies might just ignore you, then eat you. Finally, your low strength score could leave you getting tossed around by various waves or giant squids, then eaten by aforementioned squid but your party will sail to the ends of the earth to bring you back so do your part piss off the enemies and land some cheap shots just remember nobody lives forever and your date with the locker may eventually come due thanks for watching if you liked the video remember to like and subscribe we make two videos every week and come back next week for two builds that are very very different